becomes a very, very tiny number. And that is equal to the concentration of simply the phosphate. So let's summarize our answers. Mm -hmm. All right, because now what do we need to know? All species. All species. First of all, have the H3PO4. Mm -hmm. And the H3PO4 we found was 3, three minus X. And the X from that one was 0.15. The X from the first one was so th 3 minus 0 0.15. 2.85. 2.85 moles. So after all is said and done, it is a 2.85 molar solution. The second chemical that we had was the H2PO4 minus. And that was equal to 0 0.15. 0 0.15, because that was X, if you will. The first one. Then we had the HPO4 negative 2. You mm -hmm. can look back. You, yeah, we had to jump screens. Yeah. This is going to be the 6.2. Yeah, times 10 negative 8. No, yeah, you're right. Times 10 to the minus 8th molar. And then we just got the phosphate concentration. And that was small, 10 to the minus 19. 10 to the minus 19, yeah. I don't know uh, what it was. What was it? 1.98, or let's say 2.0, times 10 to the minus 19th molar. Very, very low. And hydrogen ions. And we have one more left, and that is the hydrogen ion, and that, of course, is just going to be 0.15. Actually, plus this number, and then plus this number. Which is, which is equal to 0.15, plus these two equals... 0.15 molar. And if I wanted to find the pH, which we do, and the pH, of course, is the negative log of 0.15, and that would be 0.82. And that's an acidic pH, and this is an acid, so it, it makes sense. I'm sorry that's long, but that's how polyprotics work. Yay. Yay. Okay. Now, are all acids acids? Huh? I mean, no, I'd say that. Are all <laughs> chemicals. If an acid's an acid, it has to be an acid. Are there other chemicals that are acids? There's other things that have acidic properties, yes. Yeah, and so hence the screen that you're looking at, we have salts that are acids. What's a salt? Salt is any ionic compound. So, so first of all, folks, you've got to understand, when we use the word salt, do not think of what you sprinkle on your, uh, your uh, french fries. Salts are ionic compounds. Yeah, we were talking about bacon earlier. You know, that, that salty flavor in bacon mm -hmm. is not from sodium chloride. It's from nitrates or nitrites or one of those in there. I didn't and know that. And a bunch of other stuff. That kind of gives it a, a, that weird bacony flavor, too. I didn't know that at yeah, all. Yeah, it's got all sorts of fun so stuff. So ionic, what's, what's that mean, an ionic compound? Metal and nonmetal. So you have a metal bonded to a nonmetal. So, but some salts are acidic or mm -hmm. basic. Yep. So y when you think of an acid, you think of HA. Mm -hmm. or whatever. And you think of base, you think of, you know, XOH or something. Or possibly something with that nitrogen, like NH3 or whatever. But guess what? There are chemicals that are acid, acidic and basic that are ionic compounds or salts. And that's what we want to kind of get at here yep. today. Okay, so this is, a, this is a, just a big conceptual thing to understand. Yep. All right. Um, let's come back to this, I yeah. think. So let's kind of give some examples of some salts yeah, that and are yeah, salts weak. of weak acids. So if I have a weak acid, so can you give me a weak acid, Mr. Smith? Acetic acid. So acetic acid is HC2H3O2. So the salt of a weak acid would actually take the anion of the weak acid, not the hydrogen, because the hydrogen here, of course, is the chemical responsible for acids. Okay, so acetic acid, the salt of the weak acid, would be something bonded to acetate. Yeah, like sodium acetate. So if I have sodium acetate, NaC2H3O2, this is base. not um, a pH of 7. No. It's actually a base, yes. Yeah. Now, how do we do this? What we do is we essentially kind of ignore... Um, we ignore the sort of the nacolnosos that we talked about a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We ignore the sodiums and such like that because if we take the, the acetate ion, C2H3O2 negative, and we react it with water, when in doubt, react with water, mm -hmm. what happens is this creates an equilibrium system and the hydrogen jumps and makes acetic acid. Right. Now when it does this though, something um, amazing happens, of course, right. is it leaves your leaves your OH. So we say plus OH negative. And of course, OH negative is... It's basic. Anything with free hydroxides floating around is a basic system. So if I had a, a some sodium acetate, this sodium acetate, yep. and I dropped it into a beaker filled with water, sodium acetate's a solid, 
And we did this like in an all-day lab. We put some sodium acetate, we made our buffer. We take that sodium acetate, and as it dissolves, it undergoes this reaction, and it produces hydroxide. If you stuck in the, uh, a pH meter of some variety, you would discover that the pH would be what? Greater than 7. It would be greater than 7. It would be a pH greater than 7 because of the production of this hydroxide ion. And we can actually calculate what it will be. We'll do that on the next podcast. Yeah. But for now, let's just deal it's with just concepts. Conceptually, yeah. Now, this is very, 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 I can't see very, very important mm. that I want you to think about these two. You see, this acetate ion is kind of partnered with the acetic acid. They're partners in my mind. Yes, conjugate acid-base pairs. You see, because this really is the acid, if you recall, from uh, a long time ago, and this is his conjugate base. So if you have a weak acid, his partner, which will be the anion, anion, the negatively charged part of him, will always be a base. Yep. And the opposite is true. We'll talk about that in a second, too. The weak base, his partner, his conjugate acid, will always be a acid. And what is the difference between the conjugate base and the acid? What's the only difference? Presence of the hydrogen ion. You see, the only difference is this, this one has the hydrogen, and this one does not. So the one with the hydrogen, the one with more hydrogens, will always be the Acidic. acid. The one with the less hydrogens will be the base. Yep. Not, not these mm -hmm. hydrogens. No. It's the missing hydrogen here that makes this a base and makes it a pH greater than 7. Okay, this, is, this equation is huge to understand how to do that. Yeah. Let's summarize it just with a symbol. So if you have the um, weak acid HA, his partner, I call it a partner, and that's not really a true chemical term, but it seems to make sense for a lot of people, is A negative. HA is an acid. A negative is a base. Yep. And another thing to important note, whenever we're writing reactions, I want to say this, partners always appear on opposite mm -hmm. sides of a reaction. You would never, for example, write C2H3O2 negative plus HC2H3O2, like some kind of arrow thing. Never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, never, ever, never, then if never, do I this. So. Because this will create, a lot of students will do this, and it messes all of your math up. Yep. You know, nasty, nasty. Okay. So, so, we can do the same thing with bases. Oh, no. We didn't have a base slide. Yeah, let's do a base slide. We need yeah, to talk about bases. We do. So, let's say, um, so add this to your, to your notes, ladies and gentlemen. If I have ammonia, his partner would be? Ammonium. And what's the difference between partners? A hydrogen ion. You see, the difference is that the old H positive is, if you were to take this H positive, it can turn, you know, right here, like that, right? One hydrogen. So if I have ammonium chloride, okay. the ammonium... I'm going to put it in water. Plus water will make this hydrogen is going to jump on board with the water and make hydronium, hydronium. which is the acid piece, mm -hmm. plus ammonia. Notice that the partners, ammonia and ammonium, appear on opposite, opposite sides. sides. You must have opposite sides or you would do problems. Mm. You, create all, you will be wrong, and wrong is bad. So, you don't want to do that. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. This is just so critical to understand. Now, notice that we wrote it with plus water. On this problem, I wrote water as H2O. On the previous example, I wrote water as HOH, because I knew this was going to be in an acid. An acid, I like to write it as H2O, as opposed to HOH. Yeah, here's the one I did, the HOH, you see, because I knew it was going to be a base, and I could then see the OH negative. This is just a huge thing to understand that this, how this works, okay? Well, folks, um, this concludes today's podcast. I think this last section will require some extra explanation from your teacher. Yeah. And so... Um, this will be introduction. We'll do lots of chatting in class. Yeah. This is just kind of uh, to really understand this. And later on when we talk about buffer systems, this c becomes a little bit more clear as well. Yeah. So this is just the brief introduction to it. And um, I'm not sure podcasts are going to work as well for this particular topic. Oh, well, have you got any more limericks? No, nah, I'm going to save it for next time. I'm kind of running out of poems. Oh, I don't have any more poems. Left. No. Okay, great. Bye.